A government advisory board is recommending that organic farmers stop using an antibiotic on apple and pear trees starting next year. That news has many customers asking why any organic food would contain antibiotics in the first place. Dr. Ravashi Rangan is Consumer Reports Director of Consumer Safety and Sustainability and joins us this morning just off the red eye. And look at you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I knew welcome. what it take for you to get here. And I do think that this is a legit question because when you think organic foods, you think there's nothing on it. That's right. And for most organic foods, that's the case. An or antibiotics simply aren't allowed in most organic products, and that's what consumers expect from it. But why apple and pear? Well, in the case of apples and pears, there's a disease called fire blight. It's a bacterial-based disease. And this problem is not only for organic apples and pears, but for all apples and pears. And for years, they have been treated with streptomycin and tetracycline, human medically important antibiotics that we really need to think about how to preserve their effectiveness over time. Using them in agriculture creates these reservoirs of antibiotic resistant bacteria, and it's a real public health problem. And so for that reason, we really did not support any extension and continued extension of the uses of antibiotics. Antibiotics. Well then, so what constitutes organic in food products? Well, for livestock production, uh, antibiotics are actually prohibited. And yet for agricultural purposes, there's a little bit of a loophole there. There's not an explicit prohibition. Can you use pesticides in any organic fruits or vegetables? There are certainly natural pesticides that are allowed in organic apples and pears. And I will say, even with antibiotic use, organic apples and pears actually have a tremendous amount of value over their conventional counterpart. So what's the health risk here? Well, the health risk here is really about the environmental reservoirs of antibiotic resistant bacteria. The fact that we're using antibiotics that are important in human medicine and we're creating extra resistance in the environment which can later impact our own public health, that is a growing crisis. And so to that degree, not only is the fire blight becoming resistant, but other bacteria in the environment can become resistant and that resistance can spread. And for that reason, we do not think antibiotics <laughs> ought to be used in this kind of way in agriculture. Would the food grow without it? Without well, the antibiotics? you know, you don't need to use these every year, and fire blight is something that's more intermittent, so it's something that's used periodically. However, there are alternatives that are being developed, and to that degree, we need the USDA to actually support those research alternatives so that we can be ready for the transition. Dr. Right. Rangan, thank you. Thank you so much.